In this third video, I'm going to describe one of the most important concepts of painting in Photoshop, which is mixing paint. And the way I'm going to do this primarily relies upon one of the keyboard shortcuts that the last video described about the brush tool, which is the Alt key becoming the eyedropper tool. So you'll notice in this finished example, you have a lit ball, which shows light receding into shadow. And across that transition, there's a whole variety of colors that come up. So as you're painting, you're going to need to be able to go from one color into a second color and create that transition with the brush tool. And this is a process that's known as on-screen mixing. Now the steps of this process are really very simple. They do, however, take a little while to get used to. And you'll find that it's something you're constantly doing while painting, so it's worth practicing. So the steps go as follows. If your goal is to start with color A on the left and end with color B on the right, you begin by painting a bit of A into the middle. And make sure your flow, which is the brush property, is turned down to about 50%. That'll make less pigment come out of your brush at any given time. So then you select B, and you paint over top of it. And now as you paint on top of it, you'll see a variety of different colors result. So I'm going to pick one that looks pretty much like a middle mixture between those two. And I'll sample that with the Alt key, and then I'll paint a little more. And I notice this doesn't have nearly enough of A in it. So I'll sample A, paint it down on top, and that's looking like more of a middle mixture. Maybe it needs a little more of the, of the B color. So there you go. I've gone from A to B and found a midpoint without ever opening the color picker. And the way I did this was holding down the Alt key to use the eyedropper to sample the color and then begin painting with that new color. When an oil painter works, one of the first things they do when starting a painting is to pre-mix colors on a physical palette. Now because you're working in Photoshop, you don't have to worry about things like paint drying, so you don't really need to do this. But I'd argue that it's actually really beneficial to go ahead and mix the colors that you want to use in your composition ahead of time. So when I work, I'll oftentimes make what I call a mini palette. And in this case, it's on a layer that I can toggle and hide, or I could move around depending on where I was working on my painting. And it's just like an oil painter's palette. And now knowing what you do about on-screen mixing and using the eyedropper tool while using the brush, you could see why this would be really useful. Because I can keep it on the corner of my screen, and then as I paint, I can touch my brush using the Alt key to my mini palette, and grab colors that I want to have in my illustration. And in this way, I'm saving myself the time of constantly opening up the color picker window, changing the color, and clicking OK. And one other additional bonus of this method is that you end up with a color palette that's more consistent across your image. If you choose your colors ahead of time, you're more likely to end up with nice, pleasing color schemes than if you were to just dive right in and start picking colors randomly. And then as you work, the image itself will become a bit of a palette, and you can sample from that as you go. Now in each of the previous videos, I've ended with a review sheet that helps solidify some of the new concepts that I've introduced over the course of the lesson. In this sheet, you might see something a little familiar if you've ever been to art school. Mixing color swatches is one of the core practices when it comes to mixing paint. So I'm going to give you an example on the top layer, and then you can do the rest yourself. So you're only allowed to sample from the A and C colors that are provided. The rest you're going to be mixing yourself. And you're never going to have to open the color picker for this whole time. So I'd suggest setting your flow to about 50% and use the hard round brush. So the first step is to try and make a copy of B, the middle mixture between A and C. So I'm sampling first from A, and then painting some of C on top of it until the value 
and hue looks just about right. Now you may not get this exact, but it's really good practice for the kind of real world painting that you'll be doing before too long. So once you're happy with B, you're going to divide that further in half by mixing between A and B to create a, a middle mixture to match the above example. And then finally between B and C. Now you notice I'm never sampling from the example, only from the mixtures I've made and the A and C that are provided. So the, you may notice that I've not been particularly clean as I do this, but if I want to clean up my edges at the very end, I can sample from the background color, the gray, hold down shift, and pull a hard edge across it. So go ahead and use this sheet and give it a try. In each example, you're going to go from A through C, creating B, and then the halfway point between A and B and B and C. Do this sheet a few times, you'll find that you're much better at mixing than you were when you started. Have fun!